It is a Friday night, Flando, here at Friday Tall Grass night. Tap House. It is busy here. It's busy here. It is. It's Thursday, Friday, Tuesday. Yep. Uh, God, look at the group of people over there. Holy cow. I know, there's a big one. <laughs> there's actually a lot of people at the table. Yep. I don't know I don't know if I want to say names. I mean, I know we can say Logan Mance. I'm not going to say other names yet. We just have a, like a fan of the show here right now. Yep. I could say more, but then maybe it gets awkward. I don't know. And then we have KSU underscore fan or Jimmy. And we're going to talk Kansas State Wildcats basketball, everybody's favorite topic. Very, very good topic. <laughs> it really is. Uh, it's a tough topic this year, but... It's still a fun topic. It I mean, really is. Sports are supposed to be fun. Even when they're not very fun, you still got to find ways to make them fun. That's well said. Exactly. And at the end of the day, when you're a fan, too, yeah, you, yeah, of course I mean, you love watching. I'm not coaching team. this yeah. team. Like, yep. Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, you know. You're probably right. We yeah, probably be out there telling them the free we'd throws don't matter. We probably have five or six you know? wins. <laughs> free throws don't matter. That's Just right. get to the line. Get there. Just get Make there. 40%. But get there 28 times. <laughs> <laughs> this is good stuff. But, Faye, I love that you said that. Sports are supposed to be fun. So the premise of this show, and I told Flanders before we started, as we started recording, I'm going to try to have an open, honest conversation about this Kansas State basketball season, which is going to include us saying some critical things, of course, because K-State's had a really bad season. That said, it's not life or death. It is still supposed to be fun. So while we're going to be critical at times, we're probably going to laugh and joke in some too. And that doesn't mean we're not, we don't care about it. It doesn't mean that we're not taking it seriously. It can be a serious conversation. But I'm glad you said that because it's okay for it to be fun. I guess I want to open it up with this. There is a game left against Iowa State tomorrow. Let's talk about that first and then go to the rest of the season. Fan, you have sent me a ton of stuff to preview K-State, Iowa State. I don't want to steal your own thoughts, but I'll open with this. You, you more or less said to me before we started recording, hey, if K-State's going to win a basketball game, it should be against Iowa State in Manhattan. Why is that? Well, the Cyclones are 0 for on the road this season. They allow 1.13 points per possession, and if you've paid any attention to my efficiency stuff, that's a lot. It's bad. And they allow almost 58% effective field goal percentage all on the road. Um, And they really haven't been that close on the road. Probably their best road game was at Baylor. But other than that, they really haven't been close. Their offense is also down at .95 efficiency on the road. So they've really struggled on the road. I mean, they've got a couple decent wins in their last – since they've played us. They beat Texas. uh, They beat TCU or Oklahoma. I can't remember which one. Yeah. So they got a couple decent home wins. Yeah. And they played West Virginia pretty decent at home just uh, the other night, Wednesday night. But if you're going to beat a team, you want the worst defense in the league coming in against the ninth or the worst offense. So you're going to see the worst defense in Iowa State against the worst offense in Kansas yeah, State. Yeah, CBS should come back and so <laughs> Something's got to give at some point. It's the irresistible force play versus the immovable <laughs> object. So let me throw this at you. Yep. Now you've heard all that, and I agree. With, I mean, it's a game you should is strong yeah. when you're 2-15 and 15 in the Big yep. 12, but a game you, you could. How much does the result of this game matter to you as, as somebody who covers the program and watches it? So well, here's what I'm asking. Fan, more or less, I'll make it shorter, just told us if K-State's beating anybody, they should beat Iowa State at home. Yep. If they can't do that... Does that matter to you? Yeah, I think it does. Yeah, especially considering, yeah, if you can't beat them, you're definitely not winning one game in the tournament either. So that's your, yeah, you're not winning any more the rest of the year. Right. Um, Tyrese Halliburton also being out is just, I mean, yeah, that's made it a lot worse for Iowa State. And it should be a game, yeah, like you said, should. You never know with this K-State team. But, I mean, even against Oklahoma State, Oklahoma State, not a great team. I went into that game saying Oklahoma State probably wins this. But tomorrow, yeah, I'm thinking K-State can probably win this. Yeah, I I feel very much the same. I'm on the same page. Uh, I don't want to speak in place of you guys, so if you want to say it differently or disagree, cut me off and say it. We talk about Bruce Weber in the future. Uh, I've said on this show and on the site that he is safe, and I I think that's reporting. I mean, you read what uh, Gene Taylor said to Kellis Robinette today. I think you would probably feel comfortable with that. So that's not not opinion. That's reporting. But opinion, just so we're clear here, I don't think he should be fired. I don't think it should be considered. And I think you two are on the same page. Is oh. that true? Yeah, it's yeah, absolutely. It's definitely true for me. Like I, I get the frustration I do with, too. with yeah. losing twenty-one games, the worst conference record or worst overall winning percentage since nineteen forty-six, seventy-two years or whatever. I mean, that's all bad. Like we, I'm not going to sugarcoat any nope, of that stuff. No. But you've still built a program that went to an elite eight. 
beat Kentucky on the way. They didn't just fluke their way to the lead eight. They yep. still had to beat a very darn good Kentucky team. And then they and won the league. Team people thought they were going to. And then they either. won the league. Yeah. They tied. They beat everybody in the league. They're a very solid team. They got a four seed. They lost in the first round. It sucked. It sucked for all of us. Yeah. But they still had an accomplishment that has only been done twice yep. since 1981 at Kansas State University. Right. Um, so you could argue that's a little bit harder than even an Elite Eight, which has only happened three times since 1981 at Kansas State University. So you, you get a little bit of leeway when you do that. Yep. Plus, on top of that, you got four top 150 recruits coming in. That you're adding to two top 150 recruits in the previous year. You've got a guy that will have six top 150 recruits, all, although young, that should get a chance to at least yep. coach those guys one year and show improvement from this year, and then probably at least two years. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I could really add to that is, yeah, I agree with you guys. You, you, you can't get rid of Weber now. This season's not okay. I mean, of course. But what he's done at Kansas State, even with the – Maybe the worst, yeah, the worst season ever at Kansas State basketball. He's still maybe the best coach to coach Kansas State basketball, unless time. you go, yeah, well, at least unless you go like, way, way overall, back, yeah. Well, uh, the, way, the term I use is like if tangible championship. <coughs> or exactly. Well, yep, it's you know, seven years. Right. Yep. <clears throat> he's Bruce is kind of weird because he's kind of like a streaky three-point shooter as a right. coach. Right. Like he's going to go yep. five for eight one game, and then the next game he's going to go one for six, and that's kind of how his seasons have gone. He's He's a 38, 39% three-point yep. shooter, which they're going to be streaky by nature, which is basically Xavier Sneed's career. Like, yep. He is the basketball coach equivalent of Xavier Sneed as a shooter. Yeah. And you're going to be up. It, it's weird because you look at his record, and he's basically 500 in the Big 12 during, yep. his, during his career. But he's he's also better than 500, way better, and he's also way worse than 500. So it's a, just a unique because you don't see many coaches – have that cycle and but the thing is when you look at bruce's career the cycle's been consistent right so it's not like a fluke He's like consistently it's what he does exactly yeah yeah i mean so now now we've established that i'm gonna ask in a different way all that said i think you've just heard all three of us you know for clarity uh believe he deserves an opportunity well he will get an opportunity yep. i'm not saying it's silly to talk about that would be condescending to the people who believe otherwise yeah because my opinion is just an opinion i do understand as fan just said you rattle off all the numbers amount of losses how long it's been since that but that season i do understand why someone would ask that question or talk about it but the point is it's not going to happen and the three of us don't think it should now that said let's say let's just say they <laughs> lose argument's sake all that said, and you can take a second to think, because I don't know my answer to this either. What does a 2-16 and 16 Big 12 season, though? We came into this, myself more than anybody, saying it's ridiculous. They were picked ninth. They're going to finish fourth, fifth, sixth in that range. They're going to finish 10th and have one of the worst Big 12 seasons yep. ever. Why were we so wrong? <laughs> one. Yep. And then two, what do you have to evaluate about yourself now to your thoughts on this program yep. going forward? Man, that is a loaded question. I know, like, I know. Yeah. <laughs> and you handle that on August. <laughs> I, I really think this season as a whole is, it's it's not been great, it, obviously. And and K State has a lot to look look at. It's a sticky situation because when you have such a bad year like this, you want to say, oh, it's got to be a lot better next year. Right. But it's also hard to say that because yeah, when you go from two and sixteen, it's hard to think, oh, can you really make the tournament the next yeah. year? And some people want that and. Um, I, I don't think I'll have my expectations quite as high as that, but yeah, you want to see improvement. You have to see improvement, a lot of improvement. Like, um, I know there's been a lot of close games this year, but even more close games with, right. with uh, I mean, more wins as well. I mean, it's going to be an interesting thing. If you go 2-16, and 16, you lose to the worst team in the Big 12 to finish the season, besides yourself, of course. Um, it's just not a good look. And then yeah. how you evaluate, I mean... Did you say how I evaluate well, myself here, and yeah, how? Let me re-ask, yeah, let me re-ask it. So again, the hypothetical is K-State loses goes goes in two and sixteen in the yep. Big Twelve. You thought before the year they would go what? At, yep, I mean, eight? Th- third in the Big Twelve. Yeah, right. like so, yep. so yeah, it's not to criticize yep. you. What's the gap? What what What's, what did the yeah. team miss that you thought they were going to have? Okay, and yeah. I can answer this question too. If, if but what did you think they were going to be better? And listen, when you the answer is Xavier Sneed. Oh, that's enough. exactly what right. it was. Yeah. So yeah. So you're, but that's not us criticizing or blaming players. Yep. yep. Bruce Weber said himself, it's his fault. It's always the coaching staffs. They're responsible for it. But we know that. So yep. I'm asking you, what did they not produce on the floor? You yep. thought they would that we got wrong. It's similar to a question you asked on a podcast I think last week. Uh, what Bruce I think has been missing 
a leader like Barry Brown to go out there and get the job done every right. single game, whether that was going to be X or Cardi this year, and neither of them have right. been that guy consistently. Fair enough. And then same to you. Uh, and you, and you, that was exactly what I was looking for. Same to you. So, same to you. Like, you didn't maybe have them as high as Flanders or I did, but if you had them, if you thought maybe they could win nine Big 12 games or projected something like that, and they're at two, and you could be obviously more analytical yeah. about it, what were, what were we wrong about? What did they not have that we guessed they probably would have? Number one, I would I would go with what I call lead guard play. Yeah. Like, because I don't believe Bruce has ever been like a true point guard guy. Like, yeah, right. He, but he's got a lead guard, and you've got to have a lead guard that can handle the ball, and then you've got to have guys that around him that can pass the ball well too. Mm-hmm. And this is going to be a, a, a season with a turnover rate where K-State turns it over 21% of the time. So 20% yeah. of their possessions, they turn it over, which is the second worst in Bruce's career as a Power 5 coach. Um, and the kind of the magic number for Bruce has been 19%. Which is not a doesn't seem like a big gap, but it's it's a pretty significant gap a game from going twenty one to nineteen yeah. percent. Yep. And when he's had nineteen percent or better, he's gone to the tournament ten out of eleven seasons. So he's been pretty good when he's had that. This year, obviously, we have not had that. And uh, then that carries over to what um, Bruce talks about: hockey assists and passing right. the ball on assists. In K State and Big 12 play as a turno- uh, an assist rate under 50 percent, meaning on made shots they yeah. only have assists less than half the time. Bruce's better teams have been closer to 55, 60 percent. Mm-hmm. So that means the ball's moving and they're catch and shoot baskets, or they're right. good feeds into the post baskets, or they're feed on a fast break basket. And when that drops below 50 percent for a Bruce team, that means the passing is down. That starts with the lead guard, but then it carries over to the rest of your players and not having very good passers at your two, three, and maybe even your four spot. That's number one. Number two is three-point shooting. Um, this team is is <clears throat> going to be one of Bruce's worst three-point shooting teams. Actually, his fourth worst. Yeah. But it's a similar thing. Like when Bruce has a team that shoots 33% or better from three, they've gone to the tournament. 12 out of 14 seasons. When they shoot less, worse than that, they haven't made the tournament at all. Wow. So, yeah, yeah. We're, we're under 32, we're 32 percent or less. You're not making the tournament with Bruce. So you combine the turnovers, the assist rate, and the three-point shooting, and you have a team that's going to win nine games. Yeah. I mean, that's that's really you combine those three offensive aspects, and that to me tells the story well that, let's 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 stop there because i think that's great let's say the black and white then says they need to turn it over less and shoot it better i mean obvious yeah. obvious yeah. things but i mean but we have specifics like if they could do those things to that level now maybe there's a seven out of nine seven out of eight yeah. chance you know or 12 out of 14 seven out of six out of seven chance yep. that they're that's 83 percent i think that they're going to the tournament so the options to get those numbers to those <laughs> metrics to those numbers next year are Nigel Pack, David Sloan, Luke Kasubke, maybe Selton Miguel, maybe yeah. Donovan Williams. I'm at shooting and not turning the ball over. Maybe Cartier Jada. So I guess the question to you, and you already said this, and I agree with you, and I don't want to make I don't want to make people mad listening to this and they're telling it's okay. I don't see any way this is a tournament team next year, personally. Um, if that's your expectation, that's fine, and maybe that'll happen. I'll be wrong. But let me ask you this, let me pose it to you. So to be a tournament team, they have to improve to those numbers. Is it fair and possible to expect senior David Sloan, freshman Nigel Pack, Luke Kasubke, and Selton Miguel, when you're taking away, you know, Xavier Sneed and maybe Cartier Jada, to make those numbers good enough? No, not not right. yeah, not I from agree. yeah, the worst season in K-State history <laughs> going into next year. Yeah, you can't expect that to happen. And it, and it won't happen unless unless some really good things for K-State goes their way. Um, I mean, yeah, but you look at the future, yeah, those numbers can change in the future with guys like Nigel Pack as a, as a sophomore or junior and stuff like right. that. You know, The six 150 but, guys he references instead exactly. of two. 100%. One. Right. So that's what it's going to come down to. Right. And this is not, again, I, I can hear people listen to this, this is not a podcast to sell you on being okay with this season. Yeah. This is not a podcast nope. to tell you, hey, they're going to be rough next year and enjoy it. That's not what this is about. If K-State goes... 12 and 20 next year you're calling for a firing I would understand yep. I mean I'm not I'm not condoning it I just want to keep putting in over and over again we're not telling you to be okay with that we're just being realistic so let me ask Jimmy I'm gonna give you a different challenge yeah let me let me say that that needs that's going to happen like what is the path to that is can you think and I know you don't have this I don't think you have this for you but can you think of examples of guys 
you know, not elite. You know, I'm not, not yeah. top 50 freshmen, but, you know, top 100, top 150 yeah. guys coming in and making, making that kind of a difference that early. Well, I mean, the obvious one at K-State is Marcus Foster. Sure. Yeah, I mean, you're right. Three-star kid that came in and was much better than he was projected to be. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's I'm not expecting any of these guys to be Marcus Foster. I'm not going to say put that on them. I think I think I will say I have hope for David Sloan. I do um, too. I do too. Here, here's a couple things about David Sloan. He is fifth, sixth in the league in assist rate, which right. is assist per 100 possessions, which takes the minutes you play out of it. Yep. So that's not bad. And he's also tenth in assist to turnover ratio. And really, that's about third or fourth in point guards. Yep. So he's a guy that can do it. He's going to increase his minutes probably next year. So that's point number one. He obviously wasn't ready to play early this year. Right. And he w- he's had good games and bad. He's been up and down. So, But to me, that's pretty normal for a JUCO guy that's not like one of the top one or two or three JUCO guys in the country because – the best players don't go juco anymore. They go to prep schools and, right. and do stuff like that. So that'd be number one. Then you got Nigel Pack, who, you know, has, has kind of he, he shows signs of being a great point guard, but then he's had games where he struggled. Yep. I mean, I think I'll give KSU Freak. He watched the game, right. broke it down, and did a good job of showing that sometimes he's not a great point guard. Right. So and you we, can't we completely even trust on him. That there is a lot of strength for him, and not this is groundbreaking, but yeah. you know, from there is some strength for him being an off the ball shooter. Yes. Score. Yep. even though he's small. Yeah, um, that's a different topic. But I mean, we were talking which, the other which would make him more like a Cam right. Cam right. Stokes Correct. kind of kid. Yeah. But then you have Miguel, who's got pretty good passing numbers. Correct. I think, uh, I think, Dejuan Gordon can be a little bit better in that area. I, I mean, so it's not just having that one guy, but it's having the collection of passers yep. around one or two guys that are really good at it. So I'm not without hope that the turnover rate can come down. Now, three-point shooting is going to take right. finding shooters. And guys like Miguel and the Kasupski are going to have to come in and be right. able to shoot the ball. Right. And Sloan's got to get better because he's not been a good shooter this year. That was the point I was going to make. So, yeah. Is on Sloan. I, I actually really like David Sloan, too. That's a good conversation. I think that he's going to be the key. Because I didn't know the numbers, I was pretending I did, but they don't shock me. I feel yeah. like he's taking care of the ball relatively well and has a pretty good assist to turnover ratio. I have been shocked to find out how poorly he shot the ball. Yep. Because I think from just a stroke perspective, I think it looks mostly fine. Yeah. But this is a guy who's shooting in the 50s at the free throw line. He's not shooting that well from three anymore. Um, but that figures and, in everything. And he every is, and he is playing 25 minutes, 26 right. minutes a game in Big 12 play. So it's not it's nothing. not on like, such spot. No, it's, it's yeah. pretty good. And, and, and his usage... The other thing is his usage is in the top three on the team. So when he's in the game, the ball goes through him a lot. But like you said, the three-point shooting is a big concern because it's 23% in Big 12 play. So that's that's a legit worry. (laughs) Yeah. Now, the good thing is his two-point is 47%, which is mainly shots at the rim for a small guy. He's he's a pretty good guy getting to the rim and finishing. You know, he's not – Take this with very much caution. I'm he's ready. not Devon whatever Dotson. He, whatever he says. He's not Devon Dotson. But Man. he can get to the rim yeah. at times similar yeah, I to don't, Dotson. I don't disagree. Yeah. Which is, to me, it reminds me more of like a Frank Richard, Larry Reed kind of kid yeah. that could be a pretty good player as a second-year player. I want to ask about another player we've kind of talked about and he brought up, and I didn't earlier, was Selton Miguel. Yep. Because he's somebody that people, even myself included, no one's watched him more than you have. Yes. I mean that sincerely. You know, maybe he has, but I mean, no one has. <laughs> but I mean, so I think some people, like me and Derek, will be in the car talking, and we'll be like, "Oh, isn't Selton going to be kind of like a defensive stopper athlete?" And he'll be like, "You know, show us clips and talk." I'm like, no, no, no. My question is this: So, Fan just brought it up. He has showed some ability to be maybe a, at least a secondary creator and passer and ball handler for his team. Is he a different player? Let me start. With. A lot of people, myself included, look at Selton Miguel and say, "Ah, oh, kind of like Xavier Sneed, good athlete, looks like he has good muscles, good jumper, dunks, and maybe some freeze. That's it." How off is that? description of his game it's off because yeah. he's just first of all a lot of people you know, even his coach really likes to to tell you he's a guard he told you he, for sure he, didn't he's, he? a, he's yeah. a guard which i believe it. he's got d-a-w-g yep, doll exactly yeah. he's yeah. got the skills of a guard he's got the handle of a guard right the step back ability the, the ability to go to the rim and and pass like you brought yeah. up and then the defense part um He's probably not going to be as good as X at, on that end because X, that is where X excels. Great at, yeah. Just excels. But still going to be very good, I think. I mean, yeah. yes, he's looked bad in high school clips on defense, but I do think he has 
the effort to do. He just doesn't put it in the high school games because they ask him, hey, to be their score, score us, yeah. score yeah. us points, and it worked out for them. They won the most games West Oaks history, and they did really well until he got hurt, and then they finally right. lost. Um, but yeah, I think that's. I think he's going to be key. And you brought it up. Uh, you asked coach this the other week. What do you think of Selton Miguel? Like, yeah. where's his position going to be? He made it sound like he could be a ball handler right. maybe right away. I mean, right. Especially if Nigel Pack struggles, you know, handling the ball and being that point guard. I mean, David Sloan will obviously take the handles at first, but it sounds like a secondary guy, like you said, that can really handle the ball. And Xavier Sinney's never really been that kind no. of guy. No, and, that, and that's the thing about Bruce's system is in the past, Cam and Barry both could initiate offense like like it's not even team. being the point yeah. guard like yeah. like you can have more than one primary ball handler and and Bruce has never been like this is my point guard he's going to initiate yeah. everything and even even this year with Cardi he doesn't always you know he does sometimes but Sloan right. comes in and does it sometimes, I mean sometimes Gordon does Gordon yeah. does it yeah. I mean yeah. so you can have multiple guys it's just having two reliable guys and this year K-State hasn't had two consistently reliable guys at that spot I just wanted to, I think you described it perfectly, but the thing is I asked about it, you nailed it, was I think with Selton Miguel, I've been guilty of it. And I think early in this early in this process, I think Bruce even described it as we needed another Xavier Steve yep. type. Now, Bruce has said multiple times since that he's already better than I ever thought he would be, uh-huh. and he's changed. I think the reason I want to talk about it is I think he has evolved from what we perceived yeah. him as when he signed to where – Four months ago, I said, Flanders, he's not a shooting guard. That's stupid. <laughs> you know, to where now, I'm like, he might well be a shooting guard. Well, and yeah. Yeah, because I, my impression was he was more like another, maybe even a little better Dejuan Gordon. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. So did I. That's yeah. kind of what I thought, but yeah. it sounds like he's more like Barry than Dejuan's like Barry. Absolutely. Right. I could totally see a scenario. Both are playing at the same time, but your wing is more of Dejuan Gordon, whereas Selton, you know, is the playmaker yeah. ball in. Right. I think I want to ask an opinion on the freshmen as we talk about this. Um, I want to talk about all three of them briefly. Dejuan Gordon, we'll start with him. I said, and I said this the other day talking, and I still firmly, I would bet money that Dejuan Gordon's going to be a very good Big 12 player and probably as good as I projected him to be before the year. I'm, I guess I'm not down on him is my question. What I'm going to challenge you guys to do, like, am I wrong? Have you seen something from Dejuan? The numbers have not been great. You know what I mean? Like, uh, efficiency and per possession, not not bad for sure. But if we we're talking about this guy could be the, the third scorer in 12 and 13 again, that that has not happened. I still think because of what I've seen, I think he can be a good player when he gets healthy and he has some weight and he gets into the college game. But th- were you concerned by him at all? Anything you saw? I... It's kind of hard to judge right now because I think he was starting to come on more before he got injured, and I think his injury is really limited. Some of the yeah. stuff he can do as a playmaker. Um, you know, your concern is his usage and, and shot percentage of percentage of shots he takes in the game is very low, like very low. lowest on the team besides Murphy. Monty. Yeah. 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 Like they, they aren't high usage guys and they haven't been. And I don't know if it's been because they deferred to the older guys, which is one thing. But then the other way you look at it is he's had the third or fourth best perimeter defender on him most games. Yeah. So why isn't he doing more? Yeah. Right. So I can see going both ways why he didn't have a, a bigger impact, but the usage rate for Cardi and X is so high, sometimes it's hard to get yours when those two are taking those shots. And I don't blame it. I mean, those are your two best players. they got to be taking the shots. So I get that. I, I'm, I'm honestly encouraged that he's over a 31% three-point shooter, yeah. even in Big 12 play. Like, he's been a decent shooter. He's the hustle plays, getting offensive rebounds, pretty good defender pretty good at getting to the rim at times so he's shown flashes but of course he's gonna have to to jump I mean but he's still at six and a half points and three and a half rebounds a game in big 12 right. play that's not bad no 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 I think it's I think with him I'm harder on him because and again any player you can yeah. look at us as picking on a player and that's not the point of it but they needed a third star well, well they needed they needed X to yes. be better quite be better back to be better yeah and then another guy yes. to become plus, and, and plus and, yeah. plus on top of it we saw the the rivals jump into the top 100 yeah. and I Flanders, think that Flanders fall. I think <laughs> I, but I think that made us all probably raise those expectations and maybe it wasn't fair I think Dejuan Gordon is – I think he is going to make the jump from year one to year two. I also think you brought it up – I think he has deferred to those other guys yeah. at, at times this year. 
He's been out there on the floor yeah. all the time, um, playing tons of minutes, which is great for experience and stuff. But yeah, you haven't seen him, even with the fourth best defender on him, yeah. when he gets the ball, try to attack the basket and make something happen. He's yeah. usually looking to make the next pass and figure it yeah, out. Yeah, I mean, he's third in minutes played per game yeah. right. behind what, just Cardi and X. I, mean, yeah. I just started to go through this traditional, you know, boring stats. Yeah. He's third in minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And I think that's going to be great for his experience and everything, and I think that's going to help him make a jump next year, and he's going to be more assertive next year, which is going to make a big difference. But that's been, to me, a key of why he hasn't been as much of a factor with all the minutes he's played because he has deferred to guys that I think he genuinely and, likes. And then, and then the, X and the other thing you like is he's 55% on twos in Big yeah. 12 play, which yeah. is the highest on the team, yeah. which is pretty darn good. Yeah, I, I think I still feel I still feel very good about him, but again, I was wrong. You know, yeah. but I think it's because of what fan talked about. I did I didn't buy into the hype and belief, and I thought Casey was going to be good. And I said, hey, here's an option for them to be good. Yep. And he hasn't like fan. I'm not. I don't think he's had a bad year. That's not the point. No, but he hasn't. You know, it's not a breakout year. Right. He didn't have Marcus Foster's freshman year. I mean, that's the only thing yeah. I guess we could say. Or you know? even, or he even have a sophomore year. Or even, though, even, but, or even. You know, so. I mean, honestly, even Cam Stokes is a freshman. Right. No, before yeah, he got Cam yeah, Stokes. Yeah. The next one I'm talking about is Montavious Murphy, because you talked about it. I mean, and maybe maybe it's not as bad as I think, but Dejuan being low usage, Montavious Murphy sure you, low yes. usage. He's the lowest on the but team. But even despite that, yeah. I guess you can tell me if I'm wrong. My, my, here's my point I'll put. I think he's been better than I thought he would. Um, tell me I'm wrong or tell me I'm right or whatever, but that's my opinion on well, Montavious Murphy. I think he's been better than I thought he would. And especially when you factor in getting hurt. Right. And, and you know, he's going to miss over, like, 14 or 15, yeah. almost half the games this season. That's but crazy. when he's when he's played, he's been really good. I, You know, and this would be a, a touchy subject, but you could argue if he had not got hurt the first time, maybe you beat Pitt. Yeah. Maybe you win well, as you said at that, St. Louis. Said, I mean, maybe you win a couple of those games. He's third or fourth most important player. And, and, and that might game. change, said, the, yeah, that no, might change a lot this yeah. season, just having him on the floor. I I and I know – I know a lot of people. A lot of people will kind of bristle at that because he's not a usage guy. Yeah. But sometimes a high blue guy yeah. that rebounds and plays interior defense and does all these things really well Draymond Green is right. is more important than you give him credit for. Yeah. And and right. in Big Twelve play, the usage is low, but he does have the best efficiency on the team. The only guy at over one point per possession. I mean, on the team in Big Twelve play. This is a small sample size, but I mean, and, and the, the games are wrong. But this is off the top of my head. In big full play, they're going to go something like two and eight or two and six yep. with him, and zero oh and eight, zero oh and nine, yes. so without him. That's and and, and, he, giant, and he played twenty five minutes right. a game. It's like, probably not a giant coincidence. No. Anybody's mad at us right now. We're not excusing <laughs> Bruce Weber's terrible season nope. because Montavious Murphy <laughs> was, was hurt. That's not yeah. a point. But we shouldn't act like it didn't matter because it did. Thoughts on Montavious Murphy this year? I think he's been. I agree with you. I think he's better than I expected him to be. I think. Going into the season, you know, he's that three-star kid uh, that you didn't know what to expect exactly out of him. And I think he's he's turned into the role exactly what K-State wants out of him. Instead of being a guy, you know, that, you know, maybe more of an offensive go-to guy, he's not that kind of guy. He's, right. Like he said, a glue guy, defensive guy, what which they need, especially with the crop of guys coming in for next year's class that are more scoring-oriented, along with Davion Bradford, of course. But... I think he's going to be key at that position. They love that four spot as well. He could eventually turn into a guy um, and, and put in sets like he, they, they did for Dean at some point because he has a jumper. He's, right. he's He is a little skilled in that scenario, but um, defensively and, and how he does, I mean, just as a teammate, has been better than I ever expected this, okay. this season. Right, I agree. Yeah, the third one I think is, is to me the most – uh, polarizing is the wrong word, but I think uncertain. We have a lot of arguments in the car, you know, me and Flanders and DY about Antonio Gordon. For the record, none of us dislike Antonio Gordon. Yeah, I think he's a nice kid. Yep. I've enjoyed talking to him. I think he has some skill, too. But he's the one that I, I'll be honest, like yep. I, wonder, I wonder about. Mm -hmm. I'll start with Fan and come to you. Uh, Antonio Gordon, you know, some great flashes. Texas Tech was fantastic. Yeah. But outside of that, when we get to conference good. play, it's been, it's been rough. Well, I'll just say it this way. You need... You need guys that can play 15, 20 minutes a game. No doubt. Be role players. Go get rebounds. And the problem is Antonio Gordon had to do that on a bad team. Right. But you put Antonio Gordon on a good team, and he's he's another one of those, not quite as important as, as Murphy necessarily, but another one of those glue guys that can make a difference and be an impactful player just because he does those things well. And 
he always seemed like he was the hardest playing guy on the court, which for a guy that didn't get touted, maybe didn't. Right. I mean, yeah. he's. I'll say he's been much better than I ever anticipated. Like, I think he, ha- yeah, yeah, he, I he has been. I like, think that is. I he's mean, had a bigger impact than I ever Shooting-wise, I expect him to be better. But, yeah, yeah. besides that, he's, that, he's done things that's that my, I didn't that's expect. My, in my, what's the word, uh, immature, you know, selfish beat with Antonio. And his small sample size is like, I'm just concerned about how poor of a shooter. Yeah. That, oh, that's, yeah. He has been. And I, mean, I, know, I know it's small sample size. Um, and I, I, I wonder if he's a stretch four who, who I'm being overly yeah. dramatic here, but can't shoot. That would concern. Yeah. Well, he's he's forty six percent on twos. That's fine. Twenty four percent on threes, which is That's low. Bored. Yeah. The thing that I like about him, like I said, the only guy that rebounds better per one hundred is 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 Mac. Yeah. Like he's the second best rebounder on the team when you just look at per one hundred possession. So, I give a lot of credit for that. So I Fl- do. I really do. Flando's a pro Antonio guy anyway. So you just heard good yeah. per minute rebounder. Um, you know, he shot almost fifty percent from two. I'm, I'm, I'm flipping on myself. I'm. Uh, being a hypocrite now. Now I'm arguing for him. And do you I, see a role for him longer? Well, on the it's team? funny because it's Antonio is the most interesting to me because going into the year, I expected him to be only a good shooter and not really do much else yeah. at all. Because right. in high school, that's basically what, what he, he was. was. Yeah. And now it's the complete opposite of that. Not a good shooter, but he likes to shoot. He does show that. <laughs> probably right. shot more he than in it. probably right. shot more than Montavious Murphy this year, yeah. maybe. Oh, <laughs> <sure>. Significantly more. <laughs> and not, not played yeah. nearly as many minutes, but. I mean, of course, Monty's injuries, but I do think Antonio, as he as he said, can be a glue guy. He has that effort in him. I've always saw saw that great rebounding, that I mean, solid rebounding out of him. Yeah. Um, and I think he could turn that into something, but it will come down to two. I mean, how quickly I think does the team get good? Because as he said, if it, they don't get good quick, it could be a scenario where Antonio goes. I mean, I might be better off on a better team somewhere else. Who knows? And, I mean, that, that could and I'm not. I'm not saying he's going to be this good, but my comp for him is is Jamar Samuels. Like, yeah. he can be a Jamar Samuels kind of. I mean, Jamar Samuels. Like 32 to be close to the game at some point. J- Jamar is a junior. <laughs> Jamar is a junior. Shot 23 percent from three. So, Jamar would take shoot, take a lot of threes and not make them too. Yeah. So, like, and he was a great rebounder, hustle guy. I mean, very similar size kids. So, yep. he's not going to be maybe that good, but he can be a poor man's Jamar Samuels, yeah. and I'll take it. I want to think now, kind of big picture about next year. I'm not. It's not prediction time for next year. We still have some of this year. Like Iowa State, Big Twelve tournament next week. We'll be going to. Um, and this is not telling people what their expectations should be. This is not me asking you to define for other people, which we never do anyway. But what they should be accepting. But I'm saying in general, let's say they play the softest non-conference schedule this side of Charmin, you know, <laughs> and they can win. You know, I, I don't know. What is a reasonable record that you think, if things go well, we had this talk about, you know, three weeks ago for this team, if things go well, what can the record be? They haven't won since, since we had that talk, so that's bad luck. But for next year, like, are we, are we talking, you know, 14, 15 wins, they get to 17, 18? Like, what's maybe a, a possible year for this team? Or am I underselling it too much? I, I think this year's TCU Oklahoma State. Yeah. Like, yeah. over 500. Five or so big goals. Six or seven, you know, wins in the league. Be competitive and show progress moving forward. Like, get yourself into the NIT. Like, I know that's t- – I mean, the NIT, I mean, we like to make fun – some people like – I don't like to make fun of the NIT, but some people do. I think it's still – when, especially for a young team, it's a good accomplishment to go to the NIT. So, like, yeah. like Texas, that, yeah. Texas won the NIT last year, and it really didn't do them any good. And somehow Shaka turns now around. Red hot. Somehow he turns it around when he loses <laughs> two. <laughs> he loses two of his four best players, and then they become good. I don't. So, re- irregardless, you know, usually you don't. But you have seen um, Baylor. Scott right. Drew took an NIT championship team. And the next year went to the Elite Eight. So, if you've got the right young team, which next year is going to be for K State, NIT would be. A certainly great goal for that team to have and, and something to shoot for. I can't really add to that. I think I've all, I, earlier, the, a couple of days ago, I thought about this. Six wins in, in conference yeah. is what I want to see, you know. And, and yeah, soft non-con would help boost that up five over 500. And so I agree with pretty much everything fans said. Yeah, I, I, feel, I feel the same, you know. I, I think next year, I think there's going to be people 
there's all sorts of different kinds of people in this world. But some people are going to set expectations on next year and say he's got to go if he doesn't make them. And that, that's not how it's going to work. There'll be other people who are maybe on the more, you know, glass half full positive side who would think, well, we got all these great young players coming in. Next year we're going to win 25 and be okay. That's probably not happening. No. That's probably not happening either. So on either side, you know, you might be mad again next year. Yeah. And we're really excited to talk about it, you know, for yeah. an entire year. And talk about <laughs> but in all seriousness, though, we were talking before we started. Like, this is still fun for us. Yep. Um, and I hope for people, and I see the tweets and the posts all the time, like, oh, this why would I ever do this? Why would I ever watch this? God, you know, God bless you for watching this. It's fun, man. It's basketball. Yeah, it's basketball. Yes. If, if, yes. I mean, like, and I know some of that's tongue in cheek. I know that, and I'm not trying to be the, the oldest fuddy duddy in the world. But if you really feel that way about your basketball team and sports, I don't know, man. I mean, yeah. or woman, you know, either of you. Yeah. Like, I just think about that. You know, I mean, I think it, it, it has not been fun to watch. It has sucked. Yeah. But boy, I just, I don't know. I guess I'm soapboxing now. I've it's never sports. To the point where I'm like. You know, no, I've, I've never like, not wanted to watch a game. Like, right. I want to watch every game. Yeah. I want to see. I was happy to watch Oklahoma. And I, and I, I didn't care. Yeah, yeah, even and, when it's not going well, it's like, yeah, and, I want to keep watching. I want to see what's going to happen I'm, next. A, I'm a ridiculous optimist, so I go into every game thinking, oh, yeah. well, maybe this is going to go right, this is going to go right, well, we're going to win. Like, I could have spent 40 minutes talking about how they're going to win the Big 12 tournament, and then we yes. got to go to the NCAA tournament. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be crazy. Yeah. Well, and each game has its own dynamic, too, like that it Oklahoma does. State game. Both teams are playing pretty horrid. Yes. And it kept the game close, but hey. Game's close. It's basketball. It's still fun. It's right, still fun right, to watch. Right. And again, I know I'm getting on my soapbox, and hey, I understand I've been frustrating. And, and if you're mad and frustrated, I'm not trying to talk you out of it. I guess I just like people being happy. And when I see that kind of stuff, I want to say to you, hey, I hope I hope you're happy. Yeah. yeah. Not in yeah. a sarcastic way. Like I hope your life is still good, and you don't really feel this way because yeah. of the basketball game. Yep. Because I love you. <laughs> if you're listening, to me, if you're that happy. I don't want you to feel that way. I love you. Shouldn't, you. you shouldn't feel that way. It makes me sad. I don't want it to be that way. And maybe they can just win against Iowa. State. State. Let's get back in some predictions. Case yeah. at Iowa State, Senior Day, Bramlage, Coliseum, starting that run in the NCAA tournament, which yes. is every bit as possible as it was this <laughs> year. You never know. Um, what do you think, Cats clones tomorrow? I think K State wins this game yeah, because because of what I said about. I mean, <laughs> part of part run. of why I think we win is because Iowa State is that bad. Yeah. But I mean, I I'm a statistical guy. And it's really hard not to luck into a good game at some point. Right. Like, and K State has not done that. Besides West Virginia, like they really haven't had a play above your head game besides no. West Virginia, which is really hard to do. Like, it's hard to be that consistently almost yep. mediocre yep. to below mediocre. So like, one night it doesn't happen. Shot falls. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. so yeah. you chance. throw you throw <laughs> in the fact that Iowa State's not a very good defensive team, especially on the road. And you would think tomorrow afternoon, K-State manages 35, 40% from three, 50% from two, X, Cardi, Matt combined for 50 points, and they get to go off at least for one afternoon having fun playing basketball yep. again. Because I can't imagine this has been any fun for those dudes. No, it, it, and it hasn't been harder. I mean, as a fan, we may think it sucks, but right. it really oh, yeah. sucks for That's those guys. Yeah. Life. You know what it I mean? like, really sucks like, for those what, guys. Like, we had a press with Xavier Steen today. Like, I didn't want to ask him a question. And maybe if he's a bad reporter, maybe I suck. I probably do. But I mean, like, <laughs> but it's just I don't want to ask the kid for the hundredth time. Like, hey X, how much does this suck? You know, I mean, because I mean, like, you could see it in his oh eye. Oh my god! Not, I love Cardi too. It's not. Yep. No, nobody start doing that. Like, it's it sucks. It's if well, you think it sucks well, for I'll you, just or for us, it sucks. For them. I'll just say for for X especially. During the lead eight, like he he became the guy. Right. Yep. He was the guy against Kentucky. Yep. He had a pretty Going good he had a pretty good the, you know, he had a pretty good yeah. junior year last year, and so I think you know the thought was I'm going to come back and be basically what Desmond Bain was for TCU yeah. this year. Yeah. And it didn't happen. You know, it didn't happen. And it's not because the guy didn't work his butt off. Oh, yeah. yep. The guy's been accountable. He's came to you guys and talked yeah. at every presser and said, hey, yep. I can. And he's always said, I could do better. Like, never. I've always appreciated that about he's him. He's very, been he's very so professional. professional. He's all, yeah, that's us. I mean, he's always. that's hard to do. And I give him a ton of credit in a, in a season that's had to be miserable for him to, to be able to do that. And, I, I you know, I, I appreciate him. And I think. We as K-State fans should appreciate him. It's funny you say that because about the professionalism because he might be the most professional like athlete at K-State. When yeah. He never like breaks character. No. It's always, you know, he, he's straight-faced. Even when you ask what his favorite movie is, 
Coach Carter, I think. You know, <laughs> and I got it's just, yeah. Because they asked, did, did you notice that after yeah. the same game they did the What's Your Favorite Movie on the Jumbotron, it wasn't Coach Carter. It was something else. <laughs> you know? I mean, I'll tell a little story. I don't think I've ever told this on the KSO yeah. show, but I, you're probably thinking of it already. We did go to the team hotel two years ago after they beat UMBC yep. to go to the go to the, uh, the Sweet 16. Yeah. And it was a good time. And um, that was the only time we've ever talked to Xavier Sneed yep. where he wasn't yeah. wasn't uh, in his media character. Uh-huh. And I'll tell you what, he wasn't even that much different. No. He was more fun. <laughs> he was. Like, he joked <laughs> he around cool. some yep. of that kind of stuff. But that guy, professional, is yeah. the word for it. Yeah. He is polished, man. He really you know? is. And, hey, I love McCall Wayne too. I'm not kidding. As a person, I love Piers McAtee. Yep. Yep. Cartier Jot is a junior. Yep. We don't know what's going to happen. I love him, too. I mean, I'm inappropriately biased to all of these guys. Yep. I understand that. But I'm glad you said that because it has sucked for those guys. Yeah. You know? And you can say, well, it's yeah. their fault. X make a shot. That's pretty mean. He'd like, yeah, to, he'd like, he'd like to make a shot, man. Yeah, those you know? guys, I mean, they don't absolutely. go out not wanting to make right. plays. Right. And I think tomorrow, I mean, my prediction, I haven't felt like K-State oh, yeah. was going to win a game since maybe at Iowa State. Yeah. A possibility where I was like, yeah. oh, I might predict that. Yeah, I think this is I, – I'm going to predict this one at home against yeah. this team that without their best player. Yeah. And with X in his senior – his last, you know, regular season game in Bramlage, I, whether he has a good game or not, I think they can get the win for him. And I think he does have a good game, though. I think he I, I want him in to like have, he always is. I yep. want him to have 25, oh, 28 yeah, points, awesome. yep. hit six or seven threes, and just have fun and smile yeah. and be excited. I mean – the moment I think of, it was way early in the KU game when he got knocked in the head and he ran out. Oh, and you yeah, could yep. see the emotion on his face yep. and how bad he wanted to win that game. Oh, right. And I feel for a kid that clearly has put it on the line for K-State. I mean, the dude has. For four years. And he's he's played well for K-State. So yeah. I want him to finish well in Bramless Coliseum. Like, I know I know it's going to be a bad crowd tomorrow. I understand that. And I it's not our job or my job to tell you what to do with your money or your time. But I would just say, like, you know, Barry Dean and Cam got an awesome senior day. You know, they won the Big 12 title oh, yeah. and an awesome senior day. Yep. Like, Xavier Sneed was on that team for three years. McCall Wayne was on that team for two years. Pearson Mackey was on that team the whole time. Those guys are, in, to me, they're yep. part of that class. Absolutely. Yep. And so, if you do go to the game tomorrow. And even, and even Cardi came in with correct, X. Car- correct. Cardi was a, is a red shirt junior. Absolutely. Correct. So, he was there with those guys, too. So, when they announced them, I guess for me, selfishly, don't think of them as the two and fifteen Xavier Steen who's missed a bunch of shots. Yeah. But that guy played his ass off for three. Yeah. Sort of a call, Wayne. If you give him one nice cheer and forget for a second that this year has sucked, I think that'd be cool. Yeah. Personal. Think think about it. X in the tournament two years ago, right? And and being a part of that great Big Twelve championship last right. year. It's just. Yeah. And Mac too. I mean, Mac and, and, and Peyton Pearson, all three. In his last home game. Yep. Yep. That yep. was awesome. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I mean, honestly. I don't know about Cardi and stuff. Like, I, I hope he comes back. Honestly, yeah, I think I do be too. Awesome I too, really do. Right? And I mean, I think you add him to two two more point guard options, and Max, exactly, the sky's and, the limit for that kid. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. I don't know what's going to happen with him. I know what I've said on the show about his prospects of coming back. If I'm betting money right now, yeah. I'm probably guessing that he's not. But unlike what I'm talking about, that's not reporting. I'm not reporting to you right nope. now. He's not coming back. Like that's not done at this point. We'll wait. We'll, we'll see. And I'm on the other side too. That I think it'd be good. You know, um, I think like with any player, and not just Cardi, you have to hope they fit yeah. in with the team and that kind of yep. stuff. And sure, Cardi and Bruce got into it a lot this year. But if Cardi comes back next year, it leads me to believe that they've probably discussed what had gone on. Cardi will now. That whole group, that whole core we yeah. talked about, won't be there. He'll be the only one. Exactly. So yes. if, if 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 that you know that core was making it hard for the new guys, not on purpose, but not getting enough yeah. shots or whatever, he would be now the yeah. outlier of that group. Which makes me think if he's just a guy, but you may be the best player on yeah. the team, but he's not. It's not just program that's still trying to kind of. I would cling to what made yeah. it so good the last three or four years, and as a new one, he's just a new guy. I think he'd be a really nice piece on that team. Well, and, and I, you know, I think I, ideally, my my hope for Cardi would be go do what X did, go do do what go Barry down. did, oh, test absolutely. the waters this summer, get evaluation, get feedback, and then come back, work this summer with the coaching staff and the new guys on redefining roles. Maybe tweaking the offense because I think there needs to be some tweaks done. Even on defense, I think they could tweak yeah. some things. And then give it a shot because I do truly believe he has got the talent, the size, the athleticism to be higher than go play in Europe, which is, yeah. is where he's at right now. No doubt. Like he's not even a D-League player like Barry and 
and Wade right now. Right. So he can raise his level, but is it worth it to him? And I understand completely if he just wants to go play pro ball in Europe or Asia and and make money, go for it. But if you want to come back, I'm going to support him 100% because I think he can be a really big piece. Then the ceiling, I think, goes up next year. That's what I was going to say, and now I'm going to take it into a whole new conversation. (laughs) But, but no, if he's back – and, and, you know, ifs and nuts, candy and, candy and you know, buts, nuts, nanny, but correct, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be Christmas every day. Yeah, Christmas, that's my favorite thing, Christmas every day. <laughs> but now you're talking, like, let's say Sloan raises his level, Cardi raises his level, Pack's a nice off-ball player, you know, Selton's a good shooter, Deshawn makes a big jump, Monty stays healthy, Antonio's a nice 50-minute guy. What if Casey Eziog is good for 20 minutes yeah. a game? What if Deshawn Bradford gives you 10? These aren't ridiculous things to be asking no. for. And if all those things happen, now maybe you are an NIT team yep. who flirts with I mean, the bubble. Maybe Maybe, yep. maybe your next year's West Virginia. Right. West Virginia yep. came back from a terrible season. Right. right. And then, I mean, they've kind of fallen off, but they're still right. going to the tournament. Right. So they're still a pretty good team. So Is you can be that team. Yeah. For I sure. mean, the coaches know more than me, but, really? I would think, <laughs> but I would think going into next year, if he was to come back, I would want to see him more off the ball Yeah. pretty much all the yeah. time, especially with more ball handlers, more playmakers yeah. coming in. Yeah, it's, it's tempting. He's talking about doing different things. And, again, we could get into it. But, yeah, you can visualize with the numbers he read from David Sloan having three or four shooters, maybe even five shooters that's yes. playing the five or yes. something around him. And now those numbers, which killed you, turning the ball over and not making threes, exactly. maybe that goes away if David Sloan's playing point guard yep. 29 minutes and you have four <laughs> shooters around him. I don't know. He may be going defeated. <laughs> and, like we're all and, and 35 and all. And this is going to – I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of yeah. add a little soapbox. Maybe yeah, you tweak it. your yeah. defensive philosophy a little bit and don't just try to turn people over 40 times a game right. uh-huh. and allow them to shoot 55%. Right. Maybe you change the way you play ball screens. Maybe you change the way you defend the post. And your turnover rate goes down, but people don't shoot as well as they are this right. year. Like, because that's killed K State. Like, our, you can't have Oklahoma State shooting. You can't. In the you can't half. have these teams shooting like they are, right. and fouling them out. We do. So, you can change. You can still keep the philosophy that that Bruce and Lowry have had. And turn that stuff up sometimes. And, yeah. and you can adjust a little bit. Those guys. And they. The thing is, we act like Bruce has done the same thing for eight years. He's changed it several times. During right. his career year already, yep. so right. he's not averse to change. He's changed this year. Yeah. yeah. So, which I think makes him even a better coach. He can yeah. he can go with the what's what's going on. Yeah. It doesn't. I mean, I mean, the, the, the good example is 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 Brad Underwood. Yeah. Changed a lot yeah. this year. Right. Yep. And has had good success with it. So we don't have to be Brad Underwood, but you can learn from what and and I think it's the nature of college basketball. They just call. A lot of fouls on the perimeter, fighting through screens and stuff like that that maybe we didn't get called yeah, last year. Right. That changes the game for for how we defend people. So. Yeah. Very, very well said. I mean, yeah, and the game does evolve every single year. They're aware. Just like y'all said, they're smarter than you. You know, like they're, yep. they're aware of it. Yeah, that's, they're looking at it. Yes. Before, but that's, that is the question. You got to you got to give up something to get something. You know, yes. usually in life, it's that you don't usually, you're usually just going to pick up something else too. Maybe that's the choice. And you know, maybe, yeah, maybe you stop trying to force turnovers every possession. But I mean, people love it when the corners press. You know, like, yeah, even try yeah. To fix, so maybe that's what you want to do. We can talk forever about it. We do have the Big Twelve tournament, Big Twelve championship, whatever they call it next week in Kansas City. Then the NCAA tournament after that. Like, yeah. that we'll be going to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but San anyway, Jose, here we come. Correct. I do want to say thanks so much to the fan. Uh, to Flanders, to Nelson, everybody. The season's not over, but it kind of feels like it is a little bit. You know, we're going to have a spring football starting up. Yeah, it's coming up. We've got availability sent out. Availability is all set out. In the morning. March 20th, I think, is when that uh, first, the first one. I mean, Maybe around that March well, 17th. We'll address while I'm on the spot, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? so, but we'll still have you back for those if you would like. Yeah. I just appreciate you so much, Definitely. everybody here. Flanders, we got to wrap this thing up because Nats and, and Red are over at the mall. And uh, we say <laughs> Tell to, your friends. Tell them. Tell your friends. Tell them. Tell your friends. Yeah. <laughs>